Today is November the 30th, 2004. The interview is being conducted in Marietta, Georgia. The interviewer is Jack W. Boone for the Marietta Golden K Kiwanis Club. The camera is an RCA Pro Edit video camera. Marty, for the record, what is your full name? Martin C. Petrus. What is your date of birth? 13 July 1921. Uh, are you retired? Uh, yes, sir. What are you retired from? I retired from the Morrison Newton Corporation in 1993 after 25 years. Uh, what uh, did you went in the military service? What year? I went in the military service in April of 1942. What branch of the service were you? I, I was originally assigned to the Signal Corps. And from there? From there, I uh, volunteered for OCS, and I was accepted by engineer OCS. I graduated in the 17th class at Fort Belvoir, Virginia. We started in July. Uh, we uh, graduated in September. How long were you in the service altogether? Uh, Considering all, about uh, about five and a half years altogether, including um, uh, World War II and uh, when the Korean War came along, I was recalled to active duty uh, for 18 months. Plus, I spent a couple of years in the occupation army in Germany shortly after the end of the war. What was the highest rank you attained? Uh, uh, captain. Were you married at the time of your service? Uh, for the World War II, I was not married, and in Korea, I was married. Was that your first? What was your first assignment after you uh, finished OCS? I was assigned to the 612 Engineer Light Equipment Company, uh, and we were activated in February 1943 at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And where did you go from there? Uh, from there, uh, we went to the maneuvers, uh, Second Army maneuvers in uh, in the, in the uh, summer and the fall of 1943. Uh, then we uh, went to Fort uh, uh, Fort. Uh, we we went. In other words, then from there we were uh, uh, sent up to the port of embarkation at New York, and we embarked on the Queen Mary on the 23rd of December, 1943. After a five-day trip, uh, we landed in the Firth of Clyde in Scotland. From there, uh, we took a train to Winchester, England, and there uh, we were stationed. At that time, we were assigned to the 7th Corps, 1st First, First Army. And then what happened after the, after you settled into England? Okay, after we settled into England, since we were heavy, uh, we, we, we uh, maintained and operated heavy construction equipment, uh, bulldozers, road graders, and things like that, uh, we had to go to different parts of England to pick up our, uh, our equipment, uh, which we did. And uh, then, uh, then, we, then we began training uh, for the invasion. Uh, part of our unit uh, was assigned, reassigned uh, to the invasion forces down near Torquay, England. Did, did you know at the time that it was an invasion? Well, the, 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 the rumors were there was going to be an invasion, but, but we, didn't know, we did not know the, 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 the dates, right? Okay, uh, did you go in on D-Day or? No, sir, I, I did not go in and on D-Day, although uh, we had been assigned four tank dozers uh, about two months prior to the invasion, and our tank dozers uh, made the invasion, uh, plus uh, about two-thirds of our company, the heavy equipment uh, was on shore uh, by D-Day plus two, and uh, I, I got there a few days later. What did you do after the invasion? What uh... our our, uh, our mission was primarily to support uh, corps and division uh, uh, objectives, such as uh, we were we were cleaning out uh, the uh, towns and cities 
that had been bombed. We cleaned out the MSRs, and uh, we were assisting in uh, the erection of uh, bridges and doing the other uh, functions uh, typically done uh, in a combat uh, situation. Explain what an MSR is. Uh, main supply road, so that, uh, in other words, what had happened uh, when, uh, when, when these cities had been uh, bombed or shell fire, uh, the, the buildings would end up in the main road. So uh, with our equipment, with our dozers and road graders, uh, we would go in there and, and clean, clean that up so the uh, trucks and the tanks could get through. Did you have any uh, opposition from the uh, property owners and people like that as you were cleaning? No, the, uh, I think the, uh, the French people were, were glad to see us. We, we really didn't see too much of the civilian population. After you, the, uh, after you got into the fighting and things were moving along pretty well, uh, were you uh, pretty constantly near the front lines? or? Uh, we we uh, supported both the division and Corps engineers. There were times when we were uh, we and our equipment was uh, was fairly close, uh, where we would be either under direct fire or uh, uh, enemy uh, artillery fire, uh, or sometimes we would be back uh, further in the core area. But I would like to say that, uh, as I mentioned, we had uh, one uh, three uh, three of our four tank dozers got ashore. On D-Day at H hour, uh, t the tank dozer at that time was a was a secret weapon, and uh, if you recall, the uh, that was the hedgerow country that we're talking about, Utah Beach, and a, a couple miles off the beach uh, there were the, these. Uh, fields uh, that were enclosed by hedgerows. These, were, these hedgerows were hundreds of years old, and they were impenetrable uh, except uh, with our tank dozers. So uh, our tank dozer, uh, in some cases, were leading uh, infantry and tank attacks. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, one of our tank uh, uh, was in a firefight and uh, our, our sergeant, Sergeant Gregory Tinkoff, uh, uh, lost his life uh, in one of these engagements, uh, but he, he, was re uh, he did receive the Silver Star, and he, his parents uh, chose to have him uh, buried uh, at the uh, military cemetery, cemetery in Normandy overlooking the beach. <clears throat> Marty, do you have any anecdotes that you can tell us about that happened while you were there? Well, generally, uh, we were in uh, we were we were involved uh, uh, with the with the breakout uh, in uh, France, uh, taking a Cherbourg. Uh, if you recall, in July of uh, 1944. Uh, we sent 1,200 bombers uh, uh, over our front lines uh, to to break out, and uh, so we we were involved in uh, you know an, an, a number of actions across uh, in that area in Germany in, in France, and then uh, the breakout uh, and, and the race across uh, France, uh, the race across France, uh, the the. Um, uh, liberation of Paris, and we were in. Uh, as I recall, we were uh, we were on the border of uh, Germany. I believe uh, in, uh, we had gone through Belgium. Uh, we were uh, on the uh, be uh, the uh, border of Germany. In fact, we actually got into Germany in September of 1940 uh, 44. But we had to with withdraw because there wasn't enough ammunition and, and, and fuel uh, to uh, sustain the drive. Did you, uh, uh, what about your food and uh, your maintaining yourself? How did you do that? Right, More, for the most part, uh, we had either the 10 and 1 rations or the, I think they called it K rations or D rations. And uh, uh, we would stop uh, at the farmhouses and try to get some uh, eggs, you know, fresh eggs. They were they were very uh, uh, they were very desirable. Did you have things like fresh milk and stuff? 
uh, we, we really didn't, uh, I don't recall ever drinking any fresh milk, uh, although we might have got a cow or something, but I don't remember that. Okay, uh, did, what about recreation? What did you do for recreation? We really were, uh, we were, we really were in a uh, sort of, a, you know, we were in the field in a combat situation, and there, there, uh, we, were, we were working, uh, you know, seven days a week, and uh, they did. They did establish an R and R program after a few months, uh, where the, uh, you'd send the guys back to Paris for a few days or up to uh, Liège or Liège or places like that. Were you uh, at any time at a point where you were feared for your life? Yeah, there, there. You know, there are times when you get in a situation uh, uh, where you're under shell fire or. You get in the minefields and things like that, where you, you know, your your fortunes. And one thing I'd like to say, you know, the the engineers uh, are there to to assist the infantry, and then we uh, we we always had uh, the greatest respect uh, and admiration for the infantry. Was uh, your unit involved in bridge building? Bridge building. In what building? Bridge building. Bridge, yeah, we uh, uh, we were involved. Uh, our equipment was used in uh, building bridges and building the abutments to the bridges. Uh, the actual, uh, we had cranes that were used, and actually, the, the the army engineers at that time used what they call steel treadway bridges, and we were uh, our equipment was used in in, in that uh, application. Did you uh, were you involved in crossing the Rhine? Right, we were involved in crossing the Rhine. In fact, uh, I remember uh, the day after Remagen, uh, the Remagen Bridge, uh, that we were asked to, we were north of there, and we were asked to send some equipment down, and so I went down uh, to make sure the equipment got down there, and we, we had equipment uh, working uh, on uh, on the Remagen the bridge site. And then, uh, then there were a number of uh, bridges, uh, the, the, the steel treadway bridges put across the Rhine, and uh, we assisted uh, uh, the uh, we assisted the engineers in that effort. Uh, we also, with our with our large trucks and trailers, uh, we we brought some uh, L LCPV, that's landing craft uh, uh, vehicle personnel from Liège, uh, we trucked them up uh, to the Rhine, and uh, this uh, equipment was furnished to us by the, by the Navy. Were you, uh, uh, once you, uh, didn't the Romagan Bridge, uh, they captured it in, intact it for a while, didn't they? And then it collapsed, is that right? That's correct, right. The, uh, Were you there then? I was not there then, no, but I was there the, the next day. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happened uh, at the end of your uh, of the war there? When you did you see the Russians? Right, we uh, um, uh, we, we uh, were over near uh, uh, see, the Alba River uh, at at the end of the war, which was in April and May of 1945, and uh, we did, uh, of course, at General Eisenhower. Uh, indicated that uh, the Russians were becoming uh, from the from the east to the west, and we were going from the west to the east. And to prevent a collision uh, of the armed forces, he he de determined to use the Alba River uh, so that the that the two armies would not clash. So that's where that's where the war ended. And uh, we we did see uh, the uh, we did see the Russian uh, soldiers. Uh, uh, we gave them uh, we gave them champagne. Uh, they gave us vodka. We slapped each other on the back. We were all good good buddies. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, what what I was impressed in a typical uh, in a typical uh, Russian uh, infantry squad, there might be three or four women. Uh, who were uh, who were part of the who were part of the uh, the, the the squad makeup, and uh, you you might ask, well, why did they have the females up there in the combat situation? Well, the reason is that they lost 20 percent of their population, and uh, from what I could see, the, the the women were were very very aggressive and made made good soldiers. 
Uh, after the uh, fighting had term terminated, what was your casualty count, by the way, uh, while you were there? What? What was your casualty count while you were there? Uh, we were we were fortunate that we had uh, we had uh, we lost two uh, uh, two in uh, in uh, in Normandy. We had a, f a few uh, a few uh, wounded, uh, but uh, we were we were very we were very fortunate. That's good. Now, after uh, after you came back from there, when did you return to the states, or did you stay for the Army of Occupation? Uh, after the war ended, uh, that was in May of 1945. Uh, we were uh, up near the Alba River, and uh, we were given orders that we were we were going to be deployed directly to uh, the invasion of Japan, which was scheduled for November of 1945. This was in May and May and June. So we uh, we convoyed over to Marseille and we were uh, down in Marseille. Uh, we had sent our equipment on a ship uh, to the Philippines and uh, then uh, President Truman authorized the dropping of the uh, of the atomic bomb in in August of 1945, and the war ended. And then uh, we were uh, then we went back to the states, and where the company uh, was disbanded, uh, and all the men were discharged. What did you do after that? Uh, I got out of the service uh, for a while, and then I went. Uh, <clears throat> Then I then I went. Uh, I took a I took a contract with the Corps of Engineers for two years as a civilian, and I uh, went went back to Germany, and uh, I served in the Regensburg area, Munich, Nuremberg, Bad Tolz. Uh, at that time, um, the first uh, the first infantry division was located in Bad Tolz, and they called it the first military district. And they were responsible for Bavaria. Uh, at the present time in Iraq, uh, we're having problems with the civilian population. But in Germany, uh, we had a constabulary, and the German people were very docile, so there, there was not that problem. So after you finished your tour with the Corps of Engineers, where did you go then? Then I then I went back to the states and uh, I I went uh, I was going to college uh, uh, I was married I had a, a two little little boys and um, the uh, in in uh, let's see with June of 1950 uh, the North Koreans uh, attacked uh, South Korea and of course that was the start of the Korean War. So as I say, I was working and going to college, and I was recalled to active duty in July of 1951, and I spent uh, 18 months in the Korean, uh, including a year in Korea. And I uh, was assigned to the same type of unit that I was served with in World War II as a company commander. And you were there how long? I served there for a year. So that would be in 50, uh, 51. And then when you returned to the States after that? Then after the States, then I, then I took a civilian, a civilian uh, career. I, I, I spent my life in the engineering and construction uh, field. Okay. Marty, uh, it sounds like you had a very long and productive life, and uh, I'm I want to thank you for serving your country. Thank you, and thank you very much, uh, Jack Boone, for uh, taking the time to listen to what